everyone, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Nina and today's video is for all of us out there who feel like we are constantly stuck in the cycle of wanting to make sincere and meaningful changes in our life, but not really feeling like we have the wherewithal or the emotional energy to get there. And therefore, we very rarely accomplish our goals. We end up feeling like it's hopeless. And instead of starting on this new path, we end up simply repeating the old habits and behaviors that we know deep down really aren't serving us or allowing us to live the life that we want to lead or become the person that we know we can become. The problem here is that in reality, it's usually not that we're lazy or that we're incapable of change. It's simply that we are missing the biggest puzzle piece in this process, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. And I assure you that change is absolutely possible when we are able to break the unconscious cycle of self-sabotage and get our brain to actually work with us instead of against us. There's just no way we can change our habits or make changes in our physical environment without making mental changes first, which is unfortunately the part that most of us completely skip over. Now, I don't think that anyone's unaware that in order to have different results in our life, we have to take different actions. I think we really do know this and we try to plan for this. However, I think we also tend to think that we are going to be able to magically go in and change this one behavior or this one aspect of our life without really changing anything else. And that really is our first fatal flaw because if we go in and try to change a behavior without first not only changing how we think about the behavior, but also evolving in some way as an actual person, we will always eventually go back to our old ways. The fact of the matter is that every single one of us has a routine set of automatic and unconscious thoughts, patterns, behaviors, and emotions that are so ingrained in us that we experience anxiety and suffering every single time we try to veer from them. And this can be true even with things that we would think would be very simple to change. As soon as our brain really acknowledges that it can't go on autopilot, we're going to feel like we are suffering in some way, and that's going to make us feel like we have a lot of resistance to this change. And as soon as that happens, we feel like altering our habits is a grueling experience, which in some cases means that we're not even going to be able to make those changes. So it really becomes essential that we actually start thinking of ourselves as a new person, as a person who has or does the things that we are working towards. Because if we fail to do this and we think of ourselves as the same person we have always been, we're going to make the same choices. We're going to run on those unconscious programs and we're going to continuously try to keep ourselves in that comfort zone. And really the most important time that we can remind ourselves that we are becoming this new person is first thing in the morning. The minute we open our eyes, we have to become conscious of the habitual behaviors that are likely to sabotage us and stop them before they start. And sadly, most of us begin our day in the exact opposite way. Instead of starting in on this new path and getting our thoughts in order, we immediately just grab our cell phone and we begin our day with the same problems and the same issues and the same negative emotions that we felt the day before. So either we expose ourselves to these horrible news stories or we go to social media and we get bothered and we get distracted and we pull ourselves right back into the same patterns that we are trying trying to break away from. And these actions that we do on autopilot will fill us with the exact same emotions that we always feel, which typically aren't that great. We will feel anxious, we will feel uncertain, and in some cases, we will even feel dread. And these behaviors certainly do nothing to help us feel like a new person. In fact, they simply reestablish that we are the exact same person we were yesterday because we're doing the exact same thing. And we know that that person did not make any changes in their life. And this is why it's so important that we become aware of these unconscious thoughts and behaviors and stop them before the day even begins. And you will find that when you are able to change those thoughts, you're able to change your behaviors and therefore you're able to make changes in your actual life. But when we do the same things we always do and we wake up with the same mindset we always have, we're not even giving ourselves the opportunity 
opportunity to grow and evolve as a person. And at that point, if we want to predict the future, we can just look at the present moment and realize that nothing is going to change in the future because we are doing nothing to put ourselves on a new trajectory. And a lot of times when we get real with ourselves, we see that we are great at complaining. We are great at making excuses, but we're not that great at taking action because usually it's that we are assuming that it's going to make our life harder, that it's going to be inconvenient, or as I said before, it's going to cause us actual suffering. It's not that we don't want the result. It's not that we don't desire it enough. It's just that our brain is telling us that we want comfort more, that it wants to stay on autopilot and do what is familiar to us. And yes, some people can muscle through it. Some people can force themselves to do uncomfortable things, especially at the beginning of a goal when there's that initial drive and excitement. But more of us tend to build up resistance and build a wall as soon as it starts to get unpleasant and uncomfortable. But what we fail to realize is that we are experiencing suffering because we did not change our thoughts. So for example, we think, I have to go to the gym or I have to clean up the kitchen or I have to stop eating unhealthy foods. But what we really need to do is to reframe these statements and reframe our thoughts. So instead, maybe we could think to ourselves or say to ourselves, I get to go to the gym or I choose to go to the gym today, or even better, I love myself enough to go to the gym today because I know it's going to make me feel healthier. When we order ourselves around or try to force ourselves to do things without remembering our why or really thinking about what the new actions are going to bring to us, we're going to feel a lot of resistance and even a lot of resentment. I don't like being told what to do or being ordered to do something. I don't think anybody does. So we have to remind ourselves that we are making a conscious choice, that this is something that we ourselves desire and that we are a new person making a new choice and having new thoughts about it and also remind ourselves that the choices we had made the day before really did not work out for us. But if we allow ourselves to keep thinking about this new action in exactly the same way, which is connected to suffering, how long do you think we'll actually keep up with it? We'll be lucky if we keep doing it even throughout that same week. There is no way we're going to be able to make it to the end goal, which is to repeat the behavior enough times for it to actually become become a habit. So the simple fact is that change really does need to start in the brain if we want it to actually stick. And sometimes nature does this for us. Sometimes this can happen through experiences. This happens a lot with food. We can love a food. It can be our favorite food for 60 years. And then all of a sudden we have a bad experience with it and we get food poisoning. And now we have new thoughts about that food. Our thoughts about that food is that every time we think about it, it makes us feel sick and that instantaneously changes our behavior forever. We never want to touch that food ever again. But what we can realize is that we can also learn to intentionally change our thoughts about something, which will in turn eventually change our behavior. And maybe it's not realistic to think that these changes are going to happen overnight, but as long as we do change our thoughts, these changes will happen. And this is something that happened for me in a pretty big aspect of my life. And it's something I'm really not proud of, but I will share with you. I used to be a very, very, very unhealthy eater. I loved junk food. I loved fast food. And these are things that I thought brought me comfort. I thought they brought me joy. Actually, I never thought that I could give up eating this way because I would feel deprived of something that I thought was a positive in my life. I really thought about food almost like a reward. But as I got older, I realized how terrible this line of thinking was. And I started to get worried about my health. I knew that if I kept eating this way, it was going to cause some really serious consequences in my life. And so since that was my main concern, I knew that's what I had to focus my thinking on. I had to think about the fact that these foods were actually harming my body when I was consuming them. So I sat down with myself. I did a lot of research and I really trained myself before I made an unhealthy choice about food to think about what the consequences of eating this food was. And with 
time, I really started to think about foods in a very different way. I thought about eating in a way that was going to make me healthy. What foods could I eat to improve my health? I almost started to think about foods like they were a medicine for me. And that's still the same thought process that I have today. And I had this incredible shift and my eating habits have completely changed. And it's not associated with suffering. It's not a struggle with me. This is something that I know that I consciously did on purpose because I knew it would make me feel better. And because I did change my thoughts about it, it's something that I do happily. I love to eat healthy. I don't crave these foods anymore because I'm thinking differently about these foods. So this is something that we can apply to absolutely any aspect of our life whatsoever. I think once we wrap our head around how powerful these unconscious patterns and these automatic thoughts really are, we understand how important it is to really override these thoughts and start designing new thoughts as a new person. We can really brainstorm. Think about people who already have this behavior and consider what they might be thinking. What would their mindsets be? And those are the thoughts that we want to start incorporating into our day-to-day -day life, even if it doesn't feel comfortable, even if it doesn't feel real right away. We want to start to think these thoughts and with repetition, they really will become our own thoughts. They will become our thought patterns. I think most of us just don't realize that we have this ability. We don't think that we can intentionally condition new thoughts into our brain, but this is absolutely possible. And when we do this, we can escape this cycle because there is no longer suffering that's associated with change because we truly do become a new person. We become a person that is in alignment with these thoughts and these behaviors. So as always, I truly hope today's video was helpful and insightful. If it was, please like it, share it, and definitely become a subscriber if you aren't one already. I would absolutely love it if you stayed connected. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today, and I hope the rest of your day is extraordinary.